Mike McCartney, Long John Baldry, thank you so much for dropping by this afternoon. It's great to see the both of you here. And um, I'm kind of interrupting a conversation that was going on about Spike Milligan, who happens to also to have been one of my favorite uh, characters of all time. I'm walking backwards the yeah. Christmas across, across the Irish Sea. sea. Yes, we're that old, folks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the blinds were drawn, but the furniture was real. <laughs> John, you were telling a Spike Milligan story. You, you, you both knew Spike Milligan, of oh. course, one of the great uh, all-time comedians uh, who came out of uh, Britain in the 50s and 60s. Um, did you know him well, John? Well, actually, our paths crossed quite often over the years. The very first time I was introduced to him was at Ronnie Scott's club. In fact, we were just discussing, he was almost like a regular fixture there at the club. Right. But the very first time I met Ronnie Scott said, oh, this is an up-and-coming young singer, uh, Spike uh, Long John Bordery. Oh, didn't I know your knee at one time? <laughs> <laughs> and then another time, we went on a, a cross London donut exhibi- uh, expedition, uh, judging which uh, patisserie or restaurant or cafe or whatever or b- bakers had the most jam in the donuts. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't remember whether it was officially sponsored this thing or whether we did it because we wanted to do it. We wanted to find out who had the most jam in the donuts. Well, I, well. I know, I, I just like, it was like, oh, I couldn't look at a, a donut in, in the face for a long time. And then before um, Mike uh, regales us with uh, his memories of Spike, another time I actually did a show with him in, in, in Lowest off to one of those places, and he was going through a phase where he took these tailors' dummies around with him everywhere, dressed in what we call demob suits in in England. You know, which they gave to um, uh, soldiers when they were being discharged from the forces, which were, I guess, cheap suits if you like. But uh, it, it, you know, it's it sort of like bordered on smart for these guys just coming out of uniform, etc. So you take these two tailors' dummies, dummies with him and sit them in the car and have conversations with them in the car and then take them into hotels <laughs> and sit them down and, and, and talk to them while he's talking to you as if they were two real people there. I mean, he, yeah. he definitely was a very odd character. In fact, had been hospitalized for various um, psychiatric reasons uh, over the years. In, in fact, uh, at one time in his bedroom... It was all painted totally black, and there was one naked red bulb uh, with uh, a reproduction of that very famous Dali painting of Christ on the cross, where it's looking down, yeah. and it says uh, uh, an, an inscription on, on this print saying, to my good friend Spike, from your, your friend Jesus. <laughs> that was in his bedroom. <laughs> the uh, once I sent him... Uh, I was in Beirut with my dad a million years ago, before the war. Mm. Beirut, we were going... In, oh, my God, this is a very today conversation, this. Mm. We're going into Beirut when it was Casino du Lieben time mm-hmm. with this cabaret and mm. all before the war. And we're going along the coast, and there's this shanty town by the side of a mountain, and the taxi driver's getting us a look at the ocean what a lovely ocean mm-hmm. look at the boats blah da da I said but yeah what's that the shacks in the midday sun that got to be very hot in Be- Beirut sun here this is woof uh, what's that he said oh no look at the boats over here I said well, excuse me corrugated iron thing the whole that's a lot of people in mm-hmm. those sheds there. what is it oh it is the Palestinian people mm-hmm. right this is the start of that and so we get in there and but it, it was all very nice and very mm-hmm. hotels and all lovely uh, mm-hmm. beach all the, the, the thing and at one stage dad was into horses loved race horses mm-hmm. and so he wanted to go to this uh, any race oh yeah there's a racetrack da, da, da. Mm-hmm. and so we're at the racetrack and I had my camera with me and I saw this Arab from the distance coming along and I said dad look it's Spike Milligan it it looked like it was Spike Milligan. <laughs> he all dressed in totally in black. Again, must have been very hot. And he is coming through, right to my camera. So I, I took one of him, and then he comes again, and co- and he's looking at me with his little cheeky eye. He knew damn well I was taking his photograph, and he didn't give a shit. 
all mm-hmm. in black and he did, nobody he, he was on his own he's a loner mm-hmm. he was a unique Arab and I took this photograph that was great and he went back smiling just looking at me a little mm-hmm. little cheeky grin that was it got it back to mm-hmm. England got it it was a slide right mm-hmm. and it I got it back I said dad I told you that guy looks like Spike Milligan look <laughs> this Spike Milligan look at him so uh, yeah great so yeah I thought at one stage I thought Spike's got to have it Mm-hmm. He's got to have it. So I sent it down, yeah. and that was it. Didn't hear any more of it till several years later. I got this letter from Norma, his secretary, his mm-hmm. manager, Norma, saying, Dear Mike, Spike's been going through his old stuff, and he's mm-hmm. found this slide you kindly gave to him. He obviously doesn't want to. You must have it back. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's written to you on it, etc. And so, okay, great. So get the slide, and there underneath, written in his own thing, he says, It is me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was a wonderful he's, character. He was great. And then we'll never see the like of him again. No, he was unique. And what he did was change the humor pattern. It yeah, was one of yeah. those humor was going along one way. Mm-hmm. He, he said, Sod that. It's I'm doing it Spike's way, mm-hmm. and the amount of people that were influenced me, all the Monty mm-hmm. Pythons, all the people that directly owe homage to that man yeah, because yeah. he didn't do rules, he did it mm-hmm. Spike's way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's he set a, a precedent in humour. Well, Mike and John, you're here mm-hmm. in Edmonton. Um, Mike, your exhibit of uh, Mike McCartney's Liverpool '60s black and white photos. Uh, brilliant, brilliant black and white photo. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's okay, it runs till uh, May twelfth. And, John, you have a lot to do with, actually, all of us being here and uh, and certainly with Mike uh, having this world premiere in Alberta and mm-hmm. the city of Edmonton. How did that start? Well, Mike uh, and I have known each other many, many years. It seems almost like a couple of centuries now. But <laughs> It is. Um, uh, I was in um, Liverpool um, the November before last. And a, a mutual friend, a lady DJ who works out of Birmingham BBC, wasn't it, um, that that lady? She said, John's going to be at the, is it the Admiralty Theatre or something? or Neptune? N- Neptune Theatre yeah. in, in Liverpool. But unfortunately, Mike was unable to come. And then he invited me the next day to attend some uh, luncheon, wasn't it? There was a, a literary luncheon or something. We call them piss-ups yeah. <laughs> in Liverpool, John. <laughs> but I was having to leave on um, um, the train to get down to a place near to Brighton, and that was a, another horror story. I won't get into that. But <laughs> but um, Mike had mentioned on the phone, he said, um, you know, I really want to get into you know, exhibiting some of my stuff because there's a whole bunch of things that are not just in the books that I've published. And I said, well, you know, why don't you um, uh, do some stuff in Canada? Because I think at that time you thought just purely in States, hadn't you? Uh, no. Uh, uh, no, 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 no more Liverpool. Yeah. I was thinking more yeah. local, Liverpool, yeah. because of this capital of culture bid. That's right. Yeah. The European capital yeah. of culture mm-hmm. bid was coming up for Liverpool. Yeah. So I was thinking of that, going into the mm-hmm. archives at some stage, uh, yeah. And that's all. It was just a conversation, passing conversation. Mm. At some stage, I must do that. Mm-hmm. And then, if America was interested, fine. Yeah. Yeah. But that's all, just for the European capital mm-hmm. of culture. That's all. Yeah, and then, uh, 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 you know, roundabouts and swings, a, a, the usual kind of thing. Some months ago, um, um, I happened to mention that I'd been speaking to Mike and that, uh, you know, he, he wanted to put on an exhibition of photographs, maybe several exhibitions across Canada. And um, bang, uh, the, the guys here in, in, in Liverpool acted, uh, v- v- well, I, I guess very swiftly on it b- because you're here and the exhibition's here. Tim yeah. rang me after talking to you. Yeah. Uh, we call him Tim Willis or the mad uh, Tim Willis yeah. or Tim Radio Willis, yeah. the uh, direct, co-director mm. of the second... The, anyway, from the Museum yeah. of... Provincial Museum of Alberta. Mm. <laughs> mad as a hatter. Yeah. Um, and he rang up and said, uh, right, you've been talking to mm. you mm-hmm. and you, you, he says you've got some great 60s photographs. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of which he's in mm-hmm. uh, and I said uh, yes I have I've got mm-hmm. some great photographs of that era uh, mm-hmm. but you're not getting any Beatles mm-hmm. because I'd reached saturation point that's right I'd been yeah. there mm-hmm. done that etc mm-hmm. so Tim said uh, well what else have you got mm-hmm. so I said I don't know <laughs> to tell you the truth I don't know so what I'm going to have to do is look 
Mm-hmm. I thought I was I've been thinking of it, uh, mm-hmm. like I was talking to John about it, but mm. I really don't know. I have to look. Mm. So I looked at my um, uh, looked at my old legs mm-hmm. and found this exhibition. Mm-hmm. It, it was a shock because half of these things have never mm. been seen before. Yeah, well, it's quite a shock going to Liverpool now and remembering it as it was in the late fifties. Because it's, I mean, it's a brilliant shining jewel of a place now. It's very different, what isn't they're it? Doing. I was saying yeah. to Terry David Mulligan earlier that in certain areas of Liverpool, they're sort of pulling away facades that have been there for I don't know how long, and discovering the basically very beautiful 18th century row housing that people yeah. never even knew was there and it's looking very posh they have discovered mm. some tunnels under liverpool which mm-hmm. are going to be opening soon oh. vast cavernous tunnels mm-hmm. this eccentric built years and years ago, hundreds of years ago they're opening those next oh really? yeah well speaking of uh, caverns um i wonder if we could play something that was recorded live at the cavern uh featuring a band from Liverpool, uh, the Big Three, who oh, I think great. Uh, had a huge following. And oh, they were the biggest band of all. Yes, right? back in the, um, they the were right great. at the start of the sixties. Johnny yeah. Gus, mm-hmm. uh, Johnny Hutch, mm-hmm. and who was the other? Johnny Gustafson, Johnny Hutch, and Adrian Barber. Yeah, right. Did I get it? Mm-hmm. Let's listen to uh, their live version of uh, "What I Say," recorded live at the Cavern in oh, Liverpool. Great. Mm-hmm. Cave dwellers, this is Bob Willis saying welcome to the best of cellar. We got the high five. Here we go with the big three show. She's the girl with a gamble. See me in misery Come on, baby, stand by me yeah. Why, why, what I say Tell me what I say now yeah. Tell me what I say now Tell me what I say right now Tell me what I say Yeah Tell me what I say What a crowd at the cavern yeah, in 1963. Yeah, that was John and I. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing I love the to hear. intro. You like the intro? Oh, yes. The traditional uh, cave dwellers. Yeah. Uh, Bob Buller, he was great. He yeah. really is very different to have a gentleman with a very refined voice. With all scouses, we all sound yeah. like that, you know. Yeah. And to have this gentleman saying, you know, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, you cabin dwellers, you uh, all these wonderful, he rhymed words. Yeah. He, he, he was magical rhyming. And th- that's why I always thought the people that, uh, when the Beatles came out, and all the big Mersey beat explosion, the ones that I always felt sorry for were Bob Buller and Pete Pest. They were the two that everyone else made millions, etc. Pete, thank God, has finally caught up. But Bob was one of those ones that never really got his just rewards, in my opinion. Yeah, he, he was kind so of got left behind. He yeah. was so mm. integral to yeah. to the whole scene, mm. and he he just sort of came. And he's never acknowledged as the power of what he did. 
was a very important part of the yeah. Cavern evening. It's almost like the uh, character we have here who lo- who actually looks similar to Bob Wooler, a man we have here called Red Robinson, uh, this jockey out of uh, Vancouver. And, of course, Bob not only did the Cavern gig, he was at the new Brighton Tower ballroom and all those A lot runs, of my pictures you know, yeah. are from the tower. And you know, he'd get, he was the traveling... Uh, uh, master of ceremonies kind of slash DJ. I don't think he actually held down a radio job, though, did he, Bob? No, I don't no. remember one at all. No, no, no. no. He would have been good on radio. Would have been very good. Yeah. 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 Well, no facilities. Mm. Didn't have the facilities mm. for that in those days. Yeah. Had his own little mm. corner in the cavern. Yeah. Was the cavern the focal point of of that musical energy that was that was going on in the sixty two? No, 60? one of them. One yeah, of it was one, one of them. them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, places. Originally, we used to go to a place uh, called the Casbah out in West yeah. Derby. Mm-hmm. We'd get on the bus at the end of our road, yeah. which one of the photographs is that uh, house there. Mm-hmm. You get on the number 86 bus, me with my cameras, and mm-hmm. I'd have to have an amp or a guitar. Mm-hmm. You'd have to have a couple of things to take. Uh, mm-hmm. Get on the bus, and our kid had his stuff. We'd get up, and John maybe join us there. Then get up to the top bus of Mather Avenue and get another bus to go to Naughty Ash, Ken Dodland, mm-hmm. get another bus there to go to West Derby Village and then walk up to the Casbah mm-hmm. and play down the. That was where Pete Best's mum, Mona Best, mm-hmm. had uh, a house. She converted this big house. The, the cellar was converted into... Uh, this little place with a spider's web yeah. on the the ceiling. Yeah. That was one of the ones. Yeah. yeah. What was the uh, club that Alan Williams had? Now, what was that? The Blue Angel. The Blue Angel. The Blue. I, I knew it was Blue something. Yeah. And yeah. what was the coffee bar? In fact, the drummer Johnny mm. Hutch from the Big Three. I always remember him coming into what was it called? Uh, I'll remember as we go on. It was a coffee bar that Alan Williams had as well. God, I can't believe it. It's gone up my head. But he used to come into the coffee. It's not very good on radio, this. Mm. But he'd come into the uh, mm. uh, coffee bar. God, I nearly had it again. Uh, El Kabbalah? Was it El Kabbalah? Th- th- yes, I seem Could to be. recall that, yeah. yeah. And mm. he would sit down mm. and he, you'd sort of guess it was a drummer because his bloody legs never stop moving like that. <laughs> He's like my son now. My son's yeah. a drummer. When he comes home, yeah. his bloody legs go up and down like some mighty yeah. dance, you know. <laughs> you get anywhere near him, he'll you die. One of the things I was wondering about was that the big three <coughs> did a version of uh, What I Say, uh-huh. of course, uh, the Ray Charles classic, and it just seemed that uh, that um, the great bands that came out of Liverpool seemed to be pretty much connected to, to R&B, to blues, and, yeah. and, and rock oh, and roll. Yeah. 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 Um, and what was the, what was the source of, of them covering so many of these great uh, tunes that... <coughs> probably weren't mm. getting exposed on radio I wouldn't think. Well I think the, the what it was, I mean the, 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 the fare that was being offered by the BBC at that time was very much uh, how much is that doggy in the window mm-hmm. and uh, uh, you know uh, Excuse me, Lita, the shrimp Lita, Lita Rosa Yeah, Lita Rosa. Liverpool and, girl yeah. careful. She, she actually was a nice old broad. I, I used to bump into her a lot at the um, um, the place on the Crom- the Cromwellian. She was always in the bar oh, the there. Crom, great. But um, lovely lady. Yeah, the uh, uh, the shrimp boats are coming. Their sails <laughs> are inside. So it was all that kind of thing in 1959-60. So uh, as soon as anything um, uh, black and ferocious came along, I mean people people <laughs> latched onto it. I mean the very first thing I ever heard. Uh, Paul McCartney singing, for instance, was um, his interpretation of Dinah Washington's version of September in the Rain. Right. And he did a lovely uh, job. He, he was very good at doing that, you know, uh, black R&B soul voices. Um, um, I mean, there, was, there wasn't a better impersonator of Little Richard than one Paul, of the, was there? One of yeah. the few people yeah. that Richard mm. acknowledged mm. as being mm. good. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you're dealing with a master, for mm. the master to say you're good, you've got yeah. to, that's, that is a, a very yeah. high compliment. Mm-hmm. Now, you also, both of you, I believe, used to collect singles um, of some of these R&B artists. And mm-hmm. there's a f- wonderful photo that, uh, that you took, Mike, of, of John and Paul standing at the train station in Liverpool. Lime Street Station, that's right. And I believe Paul has a bunch of singles in his hand. Um, you're saying goodbye, and, yeah. and uh, obviously you've been listening to records. John, now. I remember, has some mm-hmm. 45s stuck under his arm. He yeah. used to come up from London. Mm-hmm. I remember him at, in the uh, Matthew Street outside yeah. the cavern once we've been either been an all-nighter yeah. or something and i remember him 
uh, like saying, mm. right, uh, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. <laughs> I've got, you know, Big Billy so and so, Sunny Boy <laughs> Stitton <laughs> sometimes, and <laughs> ro ro Rocky Boy Blues yeah. so and so. What have you got? And we, we had to outdo <laughs> each yeah, other yeah. because he got his. I don't <laughs> know right. whether it was the same. We got ours from the sailors yeah. that went to New York and uh, New Orleans, whatever, uh -huh. sailors on the ships, and we would ask them anything. Mm -hmm. And so there was a marketplace for them. And mm -hmm. the more oblique, the better. That we, we've, mm -hmm. If you get out a name we haven't heard of, just That's to be right. boldry. <laughs> <laughs> so you That's mean right. you used to yeah. just go down to the Liverpool docks and, and just... All our relatives, any yeah. relatives yeah. that knew yeah. any sailors. I see. Then you'd just say, you know, get anything from anywhere. Any We did, now that was the great thing about music in those days. Uh, because we didn't have telly and uh, very, right, very yeah. few films, mm -hmm. all we got was this thing. Like uh, originally it was seventy eight. I've got all these uh, Chuck Berries and mm -hmm. things. Downbound Train. I've got. It's a mm -hmm. B side. Mm -hmm. uh, not many people uh, remember that one. It's a B side of a Chuck Berry thing. Downbound Train. Downbound Train. Actually, a lot of lot of Chuck B Somewhere. sides, I think, were more interesting than his A sides. The yeah, commercial. Well, this hits, one yeah. was very. I, I used to love it. <coughs> uh, <laughs> and sorry, what we're we talking about then. Song singles, actually. Yes, singles. And, yeah, I think yeah. I was the first person ever to come into Liverpool with, uh, with a BB uh, King record because up yeah. until the point where I had, you know, I came upon him quite by chance. And uh, I, 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 it's what label he was with back then, I can't remember. Because I, 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 like 59, who knows who he was with then? You'd probably have to research it. I mean, it was, he didn't become. A, a big deal, I think, until well into the 60s, B.B. King, wasn't it? And yeah. I had this B.B. King stuff, yeah. and I'm going, oh, who is this man? Yeah. yeah. No, but the great thing was, mm. I've just suddenly mm. remembered my point. I do mm. waffle. Mm -hmm. I've got to warn you now, lads. I go off on tangents. <laughs> yeah. So oh, bring me back. That, yeah. Every now and then, bring me back to earth, would you? The point <coughs> of all these wonderful records mm -hmm. is because you didn't have telly, mm -hmm. you had no idea whether they were black, they were blue, they mm -hmm. were old, they That's were young, yeah. they were posh, they were poor, they were rich, it doesn't matter. Hot, yeah. All you judged was the record that it went round and you mm -hmm. heard the sound. Yeah. So you didn't know what. That's right. And yeah. that was yeah. a magic time. So all mm -hmm. we did was go to the people that we mm. loved and that voice and that, mm -hmm. that made you move it mm -hmm. made, oh look you're dancing yeah. in your own little house in Fortin Road some of those photographs mm -hmm. that have got on the walls there that front parlour there we used to have a little gramophone mm -hmm. underneath the black and white telly you get that out mm -hmm. and put on these things that was just called music mm -hmm. and if you moved and when you throw the curtains yeah. or something you dance <laughs> you on your yeah, own talk, talking of drawing curtains I mean it brings back memories do you remember that night the, the uh, uh, the 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 house that you got your your dad <laughs> with Freddie Starr doing the show because in the the big bay window you had those big curtains and Freddie Starr standing there doing his he was just developing from being a musician Freddie into Freddie Starr in the mid was it yeah. Midnighters Freddie yeah. Starr in the Midnighters yeah. was uh, this wonderful mad uh, yeah. he was mad yeah. he still is now yeah. he's got a bit sad in his old age yeah. but he was very a bit like Spike yeah. he did it Freddie's way yeah. and he was there we bumped into them and you were with the steam packet that's right, right. we all came round to your place I yeah, used to yeah, know yeah. Brian Olga I think yeah. that's when I first met that's you that's right yeah. and Julie Driscoll yeah. I used to stay with Brian down in in London mm -hmm. and things and uh, they were playing somewhere maybe the cavern well I'll tell you where it was it was at Liverpool University ah. and it was a huge bill it was the Who the Hollies the Kinks us. and us yeah. and you remember the, the Who had to make a quick, quick schmace out of town because Mooney had thrown a, 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 a big symbol out at the audience and nearly took someone's head off <laughs> and the audience was a bit drunk and and uh, uh, chase them out of town. They yeah. they just kept driving, and and uh, and then we, um, I, I I think it was just us that came over uh, uh, to the family home. It, but it was, was. It, was like, it was a big it, party. It I know, was but, uh, no no. It wasn't a party. No, not at all. Uh, well, I said Freddie to you, Star certainly yeah, turned no, it into no, one. He was yeah. bloody right. <laughs> I said to you all. Yeah. I said, do you want to come back to ours? Oh, yeah. sounds cool. That's great. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, I said, but you've got to remember, my dad's in Mexico mm -hmm. marrying cousin Keith McCartney. Yeah. So I've got the uh, mother-in-law and uh, mm -hmm. mother 
Uh, mm-hmm. t- sorry, the stepmother and her mm-hmm. mother and the little girl there upstairs. Mm-hmm. So as long as we were quiet. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so this, yeah, no problem. But so yeah. plenty of ale. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, so we all got back to this house. As John said, big mm-hmm. long lounge, big lovely black grand piano there. Mm-hmm. And Freddie Starr, as soon as we walked in, saw these red velvet curtains yeah. at the end. Yeah. Right? In the bay window. In yeah. the bay window. Yeah. But he found that he, if he pulled the string, he could mm-hmm. open and close these bay yeah. windows. Yeah. Immediately, he said, yeah. Strip tease. Yeah. So John, John immediately <laughs> says, uh, "Piano, my dear boy, I shall play the piano." I said, oh, shh, "Quiet up, says." He said, "Don't worry, my dear boy, I'll keep the lid closed." He did, and then he went into David Rose's, da, 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 da. and on this couch, on the leather yeah. couch yeah. here, yeah. was and a thing that I'll never forget yeah. to this day was Brian Auger, Ju- Julie Driscoll, and a young lad, a singer. Who yeah. didn't say a word that night? Yeah. Do you remember that young man? Uh, it was Rod. Yeah, Rod, Rod Stewart. Stewart yeah. Right? Now that shows you how yeah. long ago. Yeah. When Rod yeah. Stewart didn't say boo to yeah. a bloody goose, that's <laughs> a million yeah. years ago. Yeah. He's there, and we're all watching Freddie yeah. doing but the also, strip But also there was uh, Tara, because he came, came up. And, and it was like just a few days after that, he ended up get, getting killed at Church Street, Chelsea, in the uh, car. Trying to, uh, yeah. trying to save his partner, trying to save a lovely man. Yeah. Tara Brown yeah. was a Guinness. Uh, lovely, right. lovely, lovely boy, fella, yeah. lovely boy, yeah. beautiful blonde hair, uh, yeah. thin and, and mm. gentle. He was like a little fairy, wasn't yeah. he? Really? Yeah. And he was the one I used to go to Lugalor yeah. in Ireland and yeah. I went to Paris with him. So mm. many stories, you, you'd never yeah. get home tonight if we start talking about them. Yeah. But he was the one in the day in the life, day in the life. He didn't yeah. know the lights yeah. had changed. Yeah. Da, 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 da. His dad was from the House of Lords, yeah. that's Tara, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's magic boy. And yeah. so Tara was there. Yeah, well. Tara was there Excellent. that night. Yeah. And in the end, yeah. we're doing the East playing this bloody da 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 da. <laughs> and so in the end, Freddie's doing it all himself. Yeah. And in the end, he's stripping off. And it's so funny. Freddie is yeah. very yeah. mime artist. Yeah. And in the end, he, he, and he keeps going back, etc. And then in the end, he, he gets everything mm. on, ex- except his undies. And he, and he goes, da, da, and it pulls his <laughs> curtains open mm. and then jumps out. Da, da, yeah. Da, da, yeah. And we are, yeah. no, no, we, we all go, whoa, we couldn't continue. <laughs> Yeah. It was yeah. so funny. Woke the whole house up, yeah. and we ended up. They came down, and we had bacon bucky butties. That's right. That's right. Uh, bacon yeah. sandwiches yeah. Yeah. around yeah. about three, four in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> he, this Freddie Starr is actually still uh, doing things, but started out life as a singer and then became a comedian, very much like an English version of uh, Jim Carrey. You know, mm. the, and, and actually they mm. look similar, don't they? They're, they're very over yes, top, r- right. rubber face. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, thanks for joining us this afternoon for Natural Blues. We're going to take a very Listen, short break. Listen, we haven't started <laughs> no, yet. No, we're going to come right back. For God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I want to mention that uh, that uh, Mike McCartney is here. Uh, he will uh, have his exhibit of 60s black and white photos of Liverpool at the Provincial Museum until May 12th. Long John Baldry is here with us this afternoon as well. We're going to take a very short break, and then I think maybe we'll listen to a skiffle track. And, uh, oh, great. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'll be right back. Uh, Skiffle really was was kind of the start of so much of what happened in Liverpool in the late 50s and, of course, in the 60s. Um, Yeah, that was our punk. That was, yeah, right. Because for the first time, ordinary human beings uh, could afford to play a form of music by having a tea chest bass, Mm -hmm. by having a washboard, you know, otherwise it's a big uh, set of drums. It's uh, a, a big bass guitar you'd have to find. Mm-hmm. The, the most expensive instrument in those days was a guitar, wasn't it? That's right, yeah, yeah. especially a bass guitar. Yeah. 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 So every kind of musician went through this skiffle phase pretty much uh, before they actually could afford to buy instruments and, and uh, became kind of le- it more was, legitimate. It was sense. working yeah. class. Uh, your, fir- your only chance that you had, because nobody had any money, particularly in Liverpool, mm. the height of uh, Beatlemania, my father was on £10 a week selling cotton that was the height of Beatlemania huh. so uh, no we had no money <laughs> that's what all these photographs are about uh, about in the museum they are, are the bit before uh, the money mm-hmm. oh. and so you see the the reality of life oh. in Liverpool it was working class photography working class music uh, everything was on the base of you didn't know what to do uh, so you got uh, photography you got the books out the library uh, music, you listen to records and invented these things called chords. Mm. 
mm-hmm. and mm. y- it was all homemade music and skiffle was the start for all the musicians i'm not a musician but for all the musicians was the start uh, of that john will tell yeah. you far more oh, yeah. than me on that score and it was really people like uh uh hugh lebbet and lebelly and uh, B- big bill brunsey that was the 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 influ- the main the main influences in the the start up of that whole thing because it was basically the the Lead Belly repertoire and the Bill Brunsey repertoire wasn't it that would, with maybe smidgens of Woody Guthrie in there as well and of course you know the man who started it all up or the man who f- had the first success with it all of course was Lonnie Donegan with his uh, Rock Island Line but I have to mention that uh, before him was a man called called Ken Collier, That's who was right. a trumpet player, and, yeah. and uh, but he started that whole thing. In, in fact, I think he invented the word skiffle, uh, and it was Ken's whole... In fact, Lonnie uh, was the guitar player, uh, well, and banjo player too in the band, when Ken had his uh, trad band with playing trumpet, and they decided, you know, for in-between sets, they'd have this little laid-back casual thing, and Ken was on guitar, Lonnie was on uh, guitar, and uh, Alex's corner on, uh, on uh, mandolin, <laughs> and um, and Chris Barber on. But you move over to um, uh, bass from trombone. I suppose his lips were feeling a little bit, you know, sort of sore at that point. So bass was a bit easier. And who was the? Uh, I think uh, actually at the time of them doing um, the Rock Island Line, they had. Um, Beryl Bryden playing washboard with them. Great. Uh, do you remember yes. dear old Beryl? Yeah. Certainly do. Yeah. Certain names from that era. Yeah. Then you went into the pop bin, the rock, mm-hmm. rock and roll bit. Mm-hmm. Certain names when I mention them. Yeah. Uh, now I'm going to give you a few, John. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And Canada. Okay. Look out, mm-hmm. Alberta. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, Cherry Wayner. Cherry Wayner. She Cherry was an organ, Wayne, player. organ player. That's right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. She, uh, and, and she was on the on the and early. And she wore uh, short skirts, didn't she? And pom poms, I think. That's and right. Playing, playing this, on the, it was a Wurlitzer organ, I think. Yeah. yeah. On yeah. things like the Six Five Special, Don, yeah. Don Lang, Don Lang trombone Six five player. Special. Yeah, yeah. Oh, now here's one for you, Daryl Quist. Daryl Quist, the name <laughs> rings a bell. He no, was on the front of the NME, and we couldn't mm-hmm. work out how they were for Liverpool. We mm-hmm. couldn't understand why this guy called Daryl Quist. Was who was he? He'd never made. He'd made a record, and mm-hmm. they put it out, and they put it. Uh, I think it was a Larry Pons. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> never yeah, heard yeah, of yeah, him yeah. since. Yeah, Daryl Quist. Just Daryl yeah, Quist. Yeah, yeah. There's one that everyone. Says, oh my who? lord! Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he was on the front of the enemy. To get to the front of the enemy yeah. was like you had to be Elvis. You had to be God yeah. to get on the front. <laughs> yeah. And this yeah. guy's on with it. What? Hold on. Mm. Are we missing something here? <laughs> yeah. Well, th- at that time they had a lot of uh, what they. Um, it was like not like the big payola thing in the states and North America, you know, where by like, millions of dollars were changing hands. It was like a mini payola in England. Gentlemen, yeah, payola. yeah, you know, you know, some <laughs> someone would get on on television for a packet of cigarettes or a drink, <laughs> you know, I suppose, or or, or uh, you know, a lady of the night being provided. Yeah, I remember right. actually one. Uh, particular lady who used to arrange these things she ended up in jail she was the scapegoat for would you remember Janie Jones yes I yeah, certainly she, do she um, <laughs> um, actually just recently sent me her uh, autobiography which is you know, uh, probably got a few people trembling I think but <laughs> she she would arrange things so uh, DJs would play certain uh-huh. recordings. I don't think any of mine got played that way, but the, the DJs we, would play we r- you, records on the BBC <laughs> if um, girls were provided for them. Okay. And then, of course, there was a little bit of um, um, uh, little bit of uh, pressure put on some of these DJs because in a wardrobe, a great big uh, armoire in 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 her bedroom there was a two-way mirror with a seat inside. <laughs> so these DJs from the BBC, you know, were being watched while they were uh, having their way with these girls, you know, in wow. in exchange for playing records. On, yeah. I'm sure you've never done anything like that. <laughs> Hulk, have you? Okay. But, you know, I was thinking there, mm-hmm. there's there's something else the two of you have in common in that you uh-huh. both had number one records, uh, John, I think, mm-hmm. in England in 67, and yeah. Mike, you in 68. Is that yeah. uh, when our takes begin, you Was yeah. that your... Uh, when the Tartakes began. <laughs> that whilst printing this exhibition mm-hmm. in Edmonton, Alberta, 
I w spent months in a tiny little uh, room in a man's house uh, called Ray Huey, a printer, and we just developing this exhibition mm -hmm. slowly. Some of these images have mm -hmm. never, ever before mm -hmm. been printed in their life. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was that. I know the eggs, never printed them before. Mm -hmm. One of them were printing there, and it's coming up. And I said, oh, he are. He's one of your lads. He mm -hmm. said, how do you mean? That's Georgie Fame. I said, well, he was called Clive Powell then yeah. in yeah. those days, <laughs> yeah, by the way. Right. Yeah. I saw him in yeah. England before we came here. Yeah. Zing with Zoot, Zoot Money and uh, oh, Bait. Gosh, yeah, they're still the going. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Still good. Uh, and I, he said, how do you mean? I said, well, he's a Lee lad. He's from Lee. Mm -hmm. I printed all this thing in Lee near mm -hmm. off the East Langs Road. Mm -hmm. And he is he? He didn't That's even know right. that yeah, Georgie fame yeah, came yeah, from Lee. Exactly right. And so uh, that was mm -hmm. all fine. Oh, God, it's gone again. I'm, I'm, going, I'm getting old. <laughs> what were we talking about then? Go on. You got, you uh, to... uh, Daryl Quist, Georgie no. fame. <laughs> Georgie fame. Janie Jones. No. Uh, <laughs> no. The printing photos for the exhibit. Printing photos. Ah, yeah, that's yeah, why. Yeah. Here we go eventually. Yeah. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you, Lord. Uh, eventually, this old man, Mike McCartney, my God, the senile old git came on radio the other day. <laughs> And the mm -hmm. end of the thing, whilst we're doing all this printing, the music, the background music, he likes mm -hmm. to play, d not uh, serious, stuff, just like background mm -hmm. music all the time. And it's one, it's one particular sort of 60s type feel mm -hmm. to it. And they kept playing your bloody record. Uh, not your record. Mm -hmm. It was another bloke that's got to number one in England. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. with your, and I said, no, no, that's not his record. Mm -hmm. This group, a new group. Yeah. And every bloody day they had your record. I said, it's not him. It's John. <laughs> that's John Baldry's well, record. Well, Chris Farlow had a kick at it, you know. Yeah, that's um, right, he I did. I think a couple of years ago, but it it, it, it didn't uh, happen for this, him. Oh, right, did he write it? No, it was Tony McCauley wrote that. Oh, Lord, I'd be a billionaire that's what I'm if saying. I'd written that song. I was yeah. hoping. I yeah. really, I just, I, I know it's yeah. John Baldry. Uh, yeah. He sang the original. Yeah. And I just hope to God he wrote yeah. it as well. Funnily enough, it, it, it's actually featured as theme music, and I, I, for the life of me, can't understand why. My version of it in a movie uh, from England called Deadly Advice, which is about this um, poor Cinderella-type uh, uh, Welsh girl who's you know, dominated totally by her awful mother, you know, uh, clean the front, front steps and uh, make my dinner and all this kind of thing. So she's thinking in her mind, I think I'll murder the old cow. <laughs> and, and in her, you know, uh, she, she keeps getting visited by the ghosts of notorious murderers from the past, uh, including Jack the Ripper and... Uh, and uh, Dr. Crippen, and there's all kinds of marvelous people in it. It was John, um, uh, John, uh, oh Lord, uh, John, famous Sir, Sir John. Um, Bob not, Raleigh? Not, not, not Gielgud, uh, the, the, the one with the two daughters. Uh, Mills, John Mills. Oh, yeah. yeah. John Mills. Sir is John. It? Yeah, Sir John Mills. Um, Billy Whitelaw, that marvelous uh, lady oh, actress. Great. And Edward Woodward. Edward Woodward. And a, a mass of other people in this movie. And um, for some reason, they've used Let the Heartaches Begin, my version, as, as the theme music to this movie all the way through. Great. It's actually a very good film, but I mean, I, I've I, heard don't of think, it. I don't think it did anything at the box office, but yeah. I thought, what a strange choice for music. Well, I'm, I'm happy that, that, that they, I've ordered it as a, a DVD, so yeah. I thought, well, you know, have it in there in case I ever need to use it as proof in a, in a court case yeah. or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you some more about uh, Liverpool in the 60s, of course, uh, the subject of uh, Michael's exhibit at the Provincial Museum. Um, Michael, uh, there was obviously a revolution, a cultural revolution that, that came out of Liverpool in the 1960s, and, and it was much more than music. It had so many other elements to it, uh, as, as any general cultural revolution w would would have but I know that you were also involved in other uh, other aspects of it I'm thinking of theater uh, poetry and and those kind of things was there something really happening on those scenes as well not something happening <laughs> it was a major revolution uh, in every strata of the arts in every possible thing uh, we were as children we were getting images coming through. You'd be sitting in Fourth Thin Road and watching the black and white telly, and suddenly this film comes on by a bloke, only a child, this man called Salvador Dali, and this filmmaker called Louis Bunuel, 
uh, and unshun on the loo, the sky cutting the eye of wood. What's going on here? We'll have no trouble here. <laughs> and uh, this weird stuff. And you find yourself going up to your room and where the light switch was on, in your bedroom, uh, the, that is becomes an eye. Mm -hmm. And out the top of the head of this person you've painted, it comes a mushroom. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? It's It changes you. You are changed mentally and mm -hmm. you, you're excited. It's something. And so you go into town and our kid will be down that end of the uh, city in the cavern and the iron door and all that sort of thing, getting on with his rock and roll. We'd be at the other end of the city in the Hope Hall, it was called, where all the alternative music, it was the Roadrunners mm -hmm. who did, they and the Stones were very similar. They were playing the same sort of blues music. Mm -hmm music. Uh, we were doing uh, mixing with the uh, scaffold were originally called the Liverpool One Fat Lady All Electric Show, right? which no one could pronounce, so we call ourselves scaffold. Uh, but in that group was scaffold three mem completely different members. Adrian Henry, the painter, in, like a pop artist. Mm -hmm. So we had painting, pop art, we had uh, poetry. Adrian was a big uh, friend of Allen Ginsberg. Ginsberg used to come across. Mm -hmm. It was the Jack Kerouac time. It was uh, events and happenings. <coughs> I started off in these events and happenings underneath mm -hmm. the, uh, the everyman it's called now. But all those things were happening simultaneously uh, across one side rock and roll across this side uh, poetry humor folk music spinners John we were just yeah. talking about the spinners before they were up that end uh, a lot of that stuff was going hand in hand all at the same time. And it's only because of the magnificence and the uniqueness of the Mersey Beat sound that mm -hmm. completely swamped this other side. And mm -hmm. so that's why this exhibition, for me, is great. Mm -hmm. To be able to tell you Albertans and Canadians of that magic other side mm -hmm. that was going on at the same time. And so that, mm -hmm. to me, is why I wanted to bring it here and show you the bit before the explosion. Mm -hmm. And the, the bit at the same time, then, I can tell you about what happened at the same time as that that nobody knows about. And in fact, I'm going back, and I'll tell you I'll be working with, I can say it here, another bloody Willis. You know, Tim Willis got me, him yes. and Tim Willis got me here. There's another Willis in England who married Scylla Black. Right, he's just oh, Bobby died. Willis. Bobby yeah. just yeah. died. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, I'm Bobby's sorry to hear that. gone yeah. with yeah. all all the nice ones, and mm -hmm. his son, his sons, three boys. Like mm -hmm. uh, I've got three boys. He uh, still had three boys, and he is going into things. And we are talking. We were talking about. Hey, I don't tell anyone in England this, mm -hmm. so don't tell any English people. Uh, and we're going to be doing something on this side mm -hmm. of Liverpool for the telly next. Mm -hmm. So you'll be seeing that uh, as soon as we've done mm -hmm. it. We should make a mention, actually, about uh, Sam Wanamaker's uh, uh, connection with the city, too. Because, you know, the man who recreated um, Shakespeare's uh, Globe Theatre on the South Bank in, in London, which was his dream. That was his life, wasn't it? It was his dream yeah. in Liverpool. He yeah. called his club the Shakespeare. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it started out as a theatre, but it didn't, you know, it, 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 they had to turn it into a, cl a night. A theatre theater club. club. Yeah. It started yeah. out as a theatre, yeah. a very prestigious thing. Mm -hmm. Sam Wanamaker, oh, God, he's come to Liverpool. Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah. And then slowly, yeah. because it was a bit too arty, Mm -hmm. It didn't fulfill. It wasn't a true theatre, mm -hmm. and it wasn't. A, so it changed into a theatre yeah. club, mm -hmm. uh, and then it eventually became a cabaret club. That's right. And right. then it burned down. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Because yeah. oh, yeah. the man who eventually ended up uh, owning that was also an actor too. Did you ever see? He's sort of like the modern recreation of Sidney Greenstreet, enormous fat man with a totally bald head, yeah. an actor who was in that movie uh, Gumshoe with Albert Finney. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember the man's name. It's no, a Jewish name, yeah. but he ended up owning that place. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I can't remember. Well, unfortunately, we're just about out of time, and I, I can't thank you both enough, uh, Michael McCartney and uh, Long John Baldry, for dropping by this afternoon. And, uh, Mike, especially for you choosing, uh, choosing Edmonton to uh, have the world premiere of your uh, 60s exhibit. That's a very great privilege. And before you, if you think you're getting off scot-free, you're not. I've, I've heard that you've got a great library here. Yes. Yeah? I am going to donate to your library the biggest head-banging record 
in existence. <laughs> this is the one. This has not been released in Great Britain yet. This is a unique. This is so unique. They aren't even allowing them to release this in England because it hasn't got my copyright sign on the photograph. One of the photographs in the museum, you'll be able to see for the next month, this one on the front of your scaffold in broken windows. This is the CD called the very best of the scaffold CD, and I am donating it to Holger and your museum. Oh, Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah. <clears throat> and yeah. it's got such head banging out and out rock and roll <laughs> insanity <laughs> let me give you a clue the end song is called long strong black pudding <laughs> let's listen to that let's or listen boudin, to that as they call it in france <laughs> as recorded by the scaffold a band that uh, our guest mike mccartney led throughout the 60s up to about the mid 70s i guess a long time yes. a long time yeah thank you both again thanks That's for having a us Holger. pleasure Holger. thank you very much <laughs>